Hello and welcome. The goal of this podcast is to get listeners connected with others in the sports industry because they say it's all about who you know, and now you know us. Hey everybody, this is your host, Connor Shank, and you're joining us today on the Constant Sports Podcast. We're joined today by uh, my co-host, Callan Coleman, alongside Sydney Crossa. How's it going, guys? Hi. Doing great. Glad to be here. Perfect, perfect. Thank so you. thanks for, like I said, thanks for joining us today. we got a great guest in Sydney. Sydney is um, well-versed in the sports industry, sports management space, especially the NIL space. Um, she's also spent time at the George Washington program, undergraduate and graduate. Um, she's well as a, a gymnast there. So she's she's on she's on both sides of the coin. She's got a lot of uh, industry related experience, and we're really excited to kind of get her thoughts on where specifically kind of the sports eight, um, athlete relations, uh, NIL industry, kind of where that's headed going forward. So just to start, I guess Sydney, can you give uh, you know the listeners and viewers here maybe a, a quick elevator pitch of kind of how and uh, why you got to where you're at right now with uh, Raymond. Yeah, so taking it all the way back, definitely a fan of all sports, whether that was watching or playing growing up, very competitive environment in my family um, and with cousins and everything, you know, always parents played sports in college as well. So, you know, that kind of instilled just that love for competition. And then I always knew I wanted to be in the agency space, not to say I knew how to get to that point, but Mm -hmm. it was a job that I watched. I wanted, um, I watched Jerry Maguire was very inspired by that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went to George Washington university with my gymnastics and, you know, kind of knew that there was a really good master's program, a lot of good connections and, you know, met, met really meaningful people to me still to this day that were in the agency space and kind of gave me a guideline, did my master's and then was given the opportunity to work at a sports agency, right? Well, simultaneously, um, actually doing my master's. So, you know, just kind of right place, right time for me, especially with the NIL world, being a college athlete, and then, you know, fasting forward to where we are today. I mean, it, I, like you said, I've gotten kind of both ends of the spectrum of being an athlete and now being on the the Raymond rep team. Right, right, right. And was it, you kind of mentioned the Jerry Maguire movie was kind of a catalyst you could say in there, but um, what do you think your, I guess, your time as a college athlete, you had some experiences on the, the NCAA kind of committee um, as like a public relations executive. Did Was that something where you were like, okay, you know, I like, I, I like kind of the NCAA as the public executive, you know, role. And then you're like, but I'm not interested in going down that career. I still like the agency stuff. Was that something that you had to balance? Yeah, I definitely like, I feel like I, since high school, it was like always agency. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to, you know, be on the side for the clients and like work with, I mean, professional teams at that point. And I helped, and working with brands was never really on my radar. Right. Um, And then, you know, stepping into a place where, you know, it was the perfect storm of everything that I had just been through with college athletics into, you know, I also went, I'm a sport, like gymnastics is a sport where, you know, you don't have a professional league. So you can, you know, to make an extra little bit of money in college would have been something really nice for me. And I know Mm -hmm. for a lot of other athletes as well. So, you know, it was honest, like I said, the perfect storm and I wouldn't, couldn't have dreamt it any other way. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. I mean, kind of getting the NIL rules changed while you were in the middle of college, obviously, probably kind of completely changed the path that you wanted to go. But you mentioned you always wanted to do the agency side of things. Um, And now, obviously, with Raymond, you're doing a lot of NIL kind of marketing and branding deals. Do you kind of think you always wanted to be on that marketing side of the agency industry or like, do you eventually want to move over to kind of a player contract side or are you just kind of keeping it wide open and taking all the experience you can get? Yeah, I think wide open is definitely, you know, the name of the game. Like you always want to be adaptable and be someone that can do it all. But I also think that, you know, my negotiation skills have been, completely transformed by doing the brand deals and by, you know, creating different opportunities for different athletes with their vision that, you know, for a player contract, that would be, you know, honing in on the skills that I've, I've already developed um, through the brand deals that I've already managed and 
fought for. Um, the other thing too, is that I think it was never a thought to do the branding marketing side, but as our age, we know social media, we know how to do, you know, just like we know how to brand our as a gymnast I knew how to brand myself I knew how to be professional on camera and so I think it translated well when you know this all came about yeah for sure is a good kind of uh, I guess intersection of your career and also where the industry is heading um, and then as you were competing as a college athlete there was it the sports management program did you always know you were going to you know check that box I guess um, to say is like okay I want to get my sports management degree and then uh, I guess hit, hit the the real world or what was it about that specific program, I guess? Yeah, so it was definitely always on my radar to do a master's in sport management. I had, you know, going through my college career, like I knew four years was going to be at GW. I was going to be doing mm -hmm. gymnastics. Um, Pre-COVID, I actually had gotten hurt and I had used one year of just a medical hardship. So I knew that that could be kind of a segue into my master's and, you know, keep competing, keep like my scholarship, that was another yeah. thing. And, you know, just easily translate. And then the GW sports management program was just such a strong, you know, the school of business is very reputable. There were a lot of women in the, in like professors that are just mm -hmm. absolute powerhouses in the space. So it really, like, I've gotten really lucky with, you know, how, where I've been, when I've been and, you know, times everything. So. Yeah, it's all about the timing. So yeah, it's huge. And then um, Callan and I, and obviously the viewers were interested in kind of, so after you graduated uh, and got your master's, so where in there did you uh, join the Hawker Sports and Entertainment uh, kind of side of the agency? Because as some of the, the the viewers and the guests here um, are familiar with Tay Hawker and kind of his NIL agency he formed up and uh, we had him previously on a podcast and he kind of took a little bit of a different approach where a lot of, when it, NIL first came out, right, it was like, football, men's basketball, but like he kind of took and went down the gymnastics, the women's soccer and kind of more diversified um, his clientele. I feel like that's a, that's a fair assessment. Um, and so where did you kind of pick up on Hawker, um, sports entertainment, and just kind of tell us about that? Yeah. So, okay. So give me, I'll give you a brief timeline. I did school from 2016 to 2020 undergrad. Mm -hmm. 2021 was that master's year. And that was also like a COVID year. And that's when right. I started. Um, and then July of 21 was when NIL started. So I would say May of 21, you know, Tay and I had met each other and, you know, he knew I wanted to be an agent and he mm -hmm. um, kind of kept that in the back of his mind, just me making a connection with someone in the sports industry. Um, and then I had gotten a call, probably I would say January of 21. And he was like, this is what I'm thinking about doing. I know you want to be an agent would you take the opportunity? And at the time I'm going into my like second semester of my first year of master's. And right. I'm like, yes, <laughs> like really? uh, there's nothing to lose at this point. Mm. You know, NIL it's happening. We don't know when we don't know what exactly. it's going to look like, but at that point it was, I had, you know, I had nothing to lose. And so, and that's the truth. I had everything to gain in that point because when May of 21, when we launched, Hawker as just, you know, privately, we were all talking about what it was going to look like when we, when it launched, mm -hmm. um, it gave July 21, you know, we had our clients first signed, like we were on calls, you know, pitching athletes. And at the time, you know, I could have went a route, a different route into a bigger agency and been an intern. Um, whereas, you know, I was doing the hands-on right yeah. away, um, right when it started, just like everybody else, everyone had the same, you know, starting point. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's big to be able to kind of get that hands on experience um, because, I mean, not to get into me, but I've I've worked at some bigger agencies in the past. And you're right, it's definitely not um, as hands on as you want it to be, as opposed to smaller agencies. Um, but if you kind of recall and we'll jump into kind of the transition over to Raymond in a second. But um, when you were with Tay and, and, and Hawker kind of what were some of the coolest things you got to work on? Was there a specific project that kind of stuck out a specific memory that you always have that you think kind of not only was enjoyable, but kind of taught you a lot and carried you forward in your career? Totally. So, I mean, we like Tay and I worked like this, like we built up that agency to what it was 
And it was so special. That'll always be special to me. Like we, you know, anyone that we like when we first started, we were like, let's sign any anyone. Like, yeah. let's see if they're marketable, right? Like if we kind of like them, like we're like, sign with us. That's kind of how every agency was, right? But you know, just those initial that first year of like, you know, when an athlete's like, Yeah, I really want to work with you. And it's like, okay, I'm doing like we're ready to start something here. Yeah. Um, those are always so special to me, but the actual project that I would say kind of like opened my eyes to more, be more creative was with specifically it was Tori Hansen and it was an underrating um, MLS team and they had an ambassadorship. So the two of them, I managed that partnership and she got to, you know, take tours of the facility, meet the staff and like, sell tickets to the games and you know in a like authentic way like she brought her team there and you know there were watch parties and things like that so you know that partnership was full speed ahead 100 percent of the way as soon as um you know we got it done so being on that project was very special to me because it made me think outside the box say there was bigger there is more um for for these college athletes so definitely and then as you uh, were well, there, I guess, from from that time now, uh, recently, uh, you kind of moved over to the Raymond representation. And f- for the listeners and viewers who are kind of in the NIL slash marketing, influencer marketing space, that's uh, it's a very hot name, hot brand, um, hot agency as of now. So that's um, that's one of the reasons why we're, we're excited to talk um, here, especially about kind of Raymond and um, some of the things you guys got going over there. So what was that like? Um, you know, did you send an email? Did they have a job application? Kind of walk the, the listeners and viewers through kind of maybe like the application process um, and, and what that was like. Yeah. So I would say building such a strong foundation at Hawker and my division of clients, mm-hmm. like once I realized I wanted to focus on female, I mean, I was working with all different sports, all different genders, which I I don't mind, but you know, that female, like strong group of clients, um, you know, I, I built a name for not only for Hawker and and the agency, but also, you know, myself and my resume. So, you know, when, I don't know if you had it, did you know Tay got acquired by Halo Sports? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when Tay got acquired by Halo Sports, it kind of left me in the position of, you know, I have my clients, I have this amazing brand. I have this, you know, agency that could do a lot, but you know, I don't want to be, I'm not there yet. I'm not, I'm, I'm not ready to do that yet. I want it to be where somewhere where, you know, there's a structure in place. Yep. There's a team of really strong people who are, who are very like me. I'm not going to say they're exactly like me. Like <laughs> they're just, you know, able to get the job done. They have really strong clients as well. And so it was honestly a perfect fit for me um, to give Mike a call and say, you know, we both had probably the strongest gymnastics divisions in our, um, in college space. And so, you know, it was, should we be competitors or, you know, join together and, and I can, you know, bring that value of some of my top clients over. And so that's exactly what happened. Called them up, you know, I didn't, I didn't do any application process, which kind of probably upsets a lot of people, but, um, like they say in the sports industry is like about who you know and you know you can't be afraid to pick up the phone and if you have good intentions like you will see that through mm-hmm. um in your conversation so absolutely yeah um our tagline of the podcast is it's all about who you know and there you go there's a perfect example um so let's dive into that a little bit kind of um tell us a little bit about being an nil manager kind of some of the skills and tactics that you think it takes and then um, maybe go in a little bit more in depth on kind of um different things that you do and use to kind of source brand deals for specific clients yeah so it's like what do you not do is really the right um <clears throat> it's not for everyone i will say that there's a lot of people who want to not only like be in the, that's, an, that's about any job, right? Like you say you want to do something, but you know, and then going gets tough and like, it's, you're on your phone all the time and you're like working constantly. Like there's no off hours, you know, it's not for everyone and that is okay. Um, And so for me, like being responsive, being professional, like that's kind of how I've always been programmed. And so it, it does come naturally. Like I'm constantly on my emails, you know, 
always staying up to date with trends for my athletes, right? Like they need to be on the forefront of things. And so, you know, like just being super, I guess, adaptable and like current and, you know, you're just taking in a lot of information, but also like, what can you do with that? And then that's what transpires normally into the deals, right? So the athlete comes to you and says, I really like this. And I really like this. And you're like, okay, well, you need to how can we monetize it? Cause that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's really good for the athletes and it's, right. it's a good, you know, paycheck and a way to manage money and things like that. So, you know, as an, as a manager, you need to look at things holistically too. Like, you know, what's best for their brand long-term. Is it a one-off deal? Is it a long-term partnership? Is it something they truly believe in? Because that's all going to come to fruition at some point you can see right through that um i'm sure daily with you guys i'm sure you've seen that as well yeah. uh, and then how to actually get the deals i would say like inbound and outbound is so important so your inbound is your your relationships with different marketplaces agencies that only work with brands you know you have to have those relationships and then the outbound which is you know outreach and you know, just being able to put yourself out there for your athletes. So kind of works both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and then I um I was curious. So, you know, as as you built up kind of the gymnastics and the and the female representation spot with, with Hawker and then uh Raymond representation was kind of building up there. And then as we you mentioned, you kind of um, brought both both sides together there. So I would assume that you get or maybe maybe not um, a lot of I guess inquiries from specific athletes maybe if it's gymnastics women's basketball players what have you so how do you I guess source um, those inquiries is there a certain criteria do they have to have you know certain maybe personality or you know something going on um, for you guys to say yeah okay let's do let's work together um, what does that look like yeah so right now it's actually very hard because you as a person I never want to turn away a mm -hmm. student athlete because they're just so like impression like they you know you want them to be steered in the right direction you want right. to protect like you want to protect them at the end of the day right so my instinct is to it's really hard to turn them away if you're just your roster's too full and you can't handle because you need to you know be able to allocate yourself for your clients that are mm -hmm. on roster um and so right now you know the summer is my biggest recruiting time we've probably locked down our roster we have locked down our gymnastics roster for the year um, but just other clients, you know, people that really take NIL seriously. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean it in the way of like, because everyone should be taking their brand seriously. I mean it right. in just like, they actually care, they care about what they're promoting. They're good in front of the camera. They have a, a really engaged audience. Yep, that's right. a no -brainer, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's someone we would take on as a client. Um, but just athletes that do want agents you know do your research there's other ones out there there's not one that's gonna fit all and especially at Raymond we've now been able to you know handpick exactly what you're looking for um in a client yeah but no I know that's that's kind of from what just from the outside looking in um just following it for the past six months or so maybe longer just kind of the the way that that both I guess agencies have, have teamed up and and worked with with uh, those types of athletes in that space and finding the right fit I think is is crucial especially when you know looking for employees like yourself and um, you know other others to work at the firm so that that's been cool to see is um, that that's been built up going forward so you mentioned this is uh, the summer's kind of the recruiting time of the year so I would assume you kind of have different phases of the year recruiting in season that type of thing so. Um, I guess as of now, what kind of give the viewers maybe a taste of what your schedule looks like? As we mentioned before, it's kind of a 24-7, it's not a typical nine to five. So what does it look like? How do you structure it? Uh, it's kind of a typical maybe week in the life of of Sydney. Yeah. So I would say, so on top of like 24-7, no day is ever the same. That is mm -hmm. like completely um, the case. So, you know, setting up as many, I like to set up as many calls as possible, like face to face, or I would ideally like it to be face to face, That's but, nice. you know, get on the, get on a FaceTime, get on a Zoom call, just like constantly keep up with your relationships because that's really important when someone has a really good feeling about you, they want to keep working with you. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. that's always on the <clears throat> forefront of my mind is to nurture my relationships that I have also build new ones. You know, there's so many people that are entering our world now 
Um, and it's really cool to hear about what they do, even if it's not exactly what you do and it can't help you in any way just to have in your back pocket for whatever you might need. Um, so building my, you know, schedule to have a lot of phone calls with people, touch bases, um, as well as just like touch bases within our company. Right. So everyone's working on their things all day long, outreach, whatever it is. So, you know, just try to get on a call with some of your colleagues that you haven't met before and, you know, introduce, I mean, companies can be really big and also really small, but, you know, just constantly, you know, communicating, but then, you know, communicating with the athletes. So if they're on the Pacific time zone, you know, you're on the call, if nighttime works for them, like you have to drop your stuff and that's your schedule for the night. Um, And so it's really, it's um, very fluid, nothing super structured. For me, I like to do a lot, uh, like outreach probably for two to three hours a day. There's so many brands out there right now. So, you know, there's a lot of, and it's crazy because a year ago, I'm not a year, two years ago, you had to explain what NIL was and like Mm -hmm. businesses wanted no part of it. And now it's like common, not like common lingo. Yep. Everyone wants in on the space. And so, you know, if you catch the right brand at the right time, like they're launching a campaign, boom, here's some athletes. Like, let me know what you think. Yeah, perfect fit. <laughs> yeah. That, that's um, that's kind of something I was interested in is to get your thought as an expert in the space. I'm um, working here for, for a few years now. Is where do you see um, kind of the NIL industry going? I know there's people that have some beef with NIL industry. It's pretty much just athlete marketing. So what do you see the athlete marketing industry in the college sector specifically? Where do you see that in the next three, five years? Do you see any, um, and I know there's some legislation talks, different things like that. Um, where do you see that going? Yeah, I think that it's all going to depend. I mean, that's another thing about this space is that the drop of a hat, you know, the some changes and that's what yeah. we see everywhere, you know, no state is the same. No school is the same. No, like team could be. They just set their own rules, and yeah. they you need. They, I think a uniform legislation will be really is in the future. Obviously, mm-hmm. like we've seen that. What it is going to be, we don't know. But I think um, Title Nine is going to have a play. I think women and male athletes, especially with the collectives, it's going to. lot where it's not um so equal opportunity for both athletes when it comes to the collectives and their, what they're bringing in and the resources they have mm-hmm. the other thing too i see is you know for international student athletes to have the same um abilities as mm-hmm. an american here but also like and not affect their visa right. um and so i think that that's going to be one of the major changes we see as well so and i hope i hope so yeah, yeah. especially for the international students they had they couldn't do anything. I mean, they were getting locked down and I had um, someone that was wild. Had, oh my gosh. I had someone who was on her, uh, was on a team. I'm not going to give a name. Uh, she was on a team and they, all the athletes on the, on the team got like a really designer, like luxury mm. um, thing, like item. And, you know, they just kind of pulled three of them that were not from the u.s like aside and we're like yeah you can't have it we <laughs> had the same yeah. sort of thing in our master's program one of our kind of friends and fellow students is a really good swimmer i won't name names again but uh swims for his national team and everything and you know we'd talk about nil stuff in class and he's just like yeah i, I can't do anything with it which i thought was crazy Thanks to my heart i know it's yeah it was definitely like a oversight Right. I I had kind of another question for you related to the future. We've kind of discussed how NIL has evolved. I kind of, you know, loaded question, answer it however you want. Um, But if you could see yourself, you know, five, 10 years down the road, however long you want to choose, where ideally do you want to be? Um, You know, do you want to stay on the agency side? Kind of where would, if you could picture a perfect life 10 years from now in your career, where would that be? And I know that's loaded. So answer it however you want. Yeah, I definitely will be in sports for the rest of time in my life. Um, And I see, honestly, I can't imagine doing anything else because I absolutely love every single day that I get to work with the athletes. Um, You know, just this whole entire like 
tunnel that we're in of NIL is so fun. And you're over here, you're over there, you know, you're just, you're doing everything. And I, I like that. I like not ha- like sitting there and looking at, I mean, lawyers have to do this, but NRGC <laughs> has to do this, but like looking at contracts all day, like, no, yeah. thank you. Um, and so, you know, just like spicing it up and always having, you know, multiple projects and multiple athletes, I think is really fun and stimulating for me. So. Yep. I agree there. And I think that's, uh, we can all agree on that. And those listen, listening here is the sports industry is good at that, right? There's no, no days the same. It's a lot of, you know, you could work for a professional team. I've said this before, but you're doing so many other different things where, you know, it's, it's just, such a vast array of opportunities in the sports industry. So that's, that's one thing that has the sports industry has going for itself. Um, so that, that that's been great to see. And then as we wrap up here, Sydney, uh, for the listeners and viewers out there, um, you are a part, or maybe you, you are interested in a, a group called a seat at the table. Um, and maybe some, if you can name some other, I guess, groups, or, I mean, I know Raymond representation has a newsletter, but other sources of, I guess, content or things that you stay up to date for that, that, um, that you like, that you enjoy, that you can maybe share with uh, the listeners and viewers. Absolutely. I can thank my, like Lisa Delpy and GW, my program for, you know, putting me on all these subscriptions. Sub- the subscriptions Mm -hmm. so like d1 ticker that's like probably the biggest one that i get updates for almost every almost probably every day um for college news Mm -hmm. and then you know business of college sports and the gist is a really good newsletter as well that i subscribe to um and so just kind of everything i mean you can't have too much information i think so you know go on twitter finding different deals i think my for it's like for you page now pretty mm-hmm. much like you're just seeing you're not even following things but you're seeing different nil deals that are going on so you know um i really like the d1 ticker though that's like an email subscription is good perfect yeah well shout out to a d1 ticker as well as to uh dr lisa delpy uh narati there we had her on the podcast uh i don't know i was like episode three yeah i was like she was yeah. one of the first the first people so yeah. she was she was awesome um, <laughs> so shout out shout out to her and what she's doing over there um, so we just want to wrap up here, Sydney. Uh, thanks for joining us today and a lot of insightful thoughts and comments. And we just like to give our viewer or our, our um, podcast guests uh, the floor for the last a few minutes or so. So um, you can plug anything, give any any shout outs, um, any big news or things to for the listeners and viewers to keep an eye on. So the floor is yours. Sure. So if you are interested in the NIL space, I would definitely say to you can connect with me. I don't mind getting on a phone call um, here and there. Obviously, schedules are are busy, but, you know, just to connect and tell you about what my what I do, but also, you know, learn about what you do and what you're interested in to maybe connect with my network. Um, I think your network can never be like big enough. You can always make it more. So continue making connections and following up and, you know, asking the right questions to people that are in the space. And then what else I would say is that if you are an intern and if you are um, like applying for internships, make sure your resume is really catered to the role that you want. Um, Depend like off the top of my head, if you're a social media person, you're applying for a social media position, you know, talk about your experience with all the different platforms. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Um, Same thing with other positions that are out there. And then I would just say, that, you know, you get out it, in this industry, in the agency industry, you get out what you put in and it's not just going to happen on its own. You have to make it happen. So, you know, really take the time to get to know your athletes, really take the time to get to know what the brand's about as well. Um, so it lends to a clean um, partnership that is ongoing forever. So. Yeah, perfect. Wise words there. And I love it. You got to make it happen. So Thanks again, Absolutely. Sydney, for joining us today and uh, to my great co-host, Callan Coleman, and thanks to the listeners and viewers. This has been another episode of the Constant Sports Podcast, and you can find these episodes on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. We release every Monday um, with, with great guests. As Sydney, this podcast is, is um, a, I think, a great resource for those in the in the, in the industry to connect with other sports professionals, um, stay up to date with, with things in that, um, I guess, realm and sector. So thanks again for joining us today, Sydney, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you both so much.